Hello, and thank you for joining us to learn more about models that shape better care. I'm Dr. Stuart Goldberg, Chief of the Division of Leukemia at the John Thor Cancer Center of Hackensack University Medical Center, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the Association of Community Cancer Centers. I'm here to update you on the management of chronic myeloid leukemia and the use of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The tyrosine kinase inhibitors, or TKIs, have revolutionized the way we think about cancer chemotherapy, and they have ushered in the era of targeted therapies. As you all know, chronic myeloid leukemia is an uncommon hematologic malignancy, affecting about 4,000 Americans each year. The disease is characterized by the Philadelphia chromosome, a unique translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22, which produces a unique protein known as the Philadelphia chromosome fusion protein, or BCR ABLE. And it is this protein, which is a tyrosine kinase, that drives the cell to become malignant. Prior to 2000, a patient with CML would be subjected to a bone marrow transplant to cure them, or would be offered interferon, a medication that would hopefully slow down the disease by attacking the filler of the chromosome. But in 2000, we developed a tyrosine kinase inhibitor known as imatinib. This remarkable drug, a pill with very minimal side effects, was able to attack the fusion protein and slow the disease, and most of the patients are still in remission a decade later. With the success of imatinib, we have then tried to develop new medications that will also attack the fusion protein, other tyrosine kinases. And in 2005 and 2006, desatinib and nilotinib were introduced. These two second-generation medications were more effective than imatinib in placing patients into remission and may even have less side effects. So although initially introduced for the treatment of patients who had failed imatinib, we now see that they may be better first-line therapies, as was shown in an important pair of articles published in the New England Journal of Medicine this past year. But the three medications do have different side effects. Imatinib, although very well tolerated, has been complicated by development of fluid retention, muscle cramping, and diarrhea and nausea in some patients. Desatinib has a unique toxicity, that of pleural effusions, which may occur in as many as 10% of patients, but and often recurs about a year or so after therapy. And nilotinib has been plagued by development of pancreatitis and a unique cardiac issue of QTC prolongation. It also needs to be taken twice a day on an empty stomach. Nonetheless, all three medications are usually well tolerated by patients, and all three medications will place most patients into remission. So how does a community doctor pick between these three medicines? Well, we look to efficacy, and the recent studies have shown that the two second-generation drugs are more efficacious in placing patients in remission. But we also looked at toxicity, and the toxicity profiles, as I said, are slightly different, and therefore we may use that toxicity profile to help pick one medication over the other. For example, the patient with pleural effusions from desatinib may not have been the best candidates, if they had prior lung disease. Or a patient with diabetes or a patient who's non-compliant may not take a drug twice a day on an empty stomach like, like nilotinib. So we may look at the side effect profile to pick which drug is best. But fortunately, most patients tolerate all three medicines, and in most patients, the drugs work. But then we do need to remember to monitor, to make sure that the patient is taking their medicines and make sure that the medicines are working because the cancer cell can get sneaky and change its shape. I hope that I've helped to answer some of your questions. The ACCC Resource Center can help you answer other questions that you may have about treating patients and following patients with CML in the community setting. And thank you again for taking a moment to learn more about models that shape better care.